Good afternoon, YouTube. This is Chuck. Today I'm coming to you from the van, and I'm over behind the amphitheater at the park. I figured the green backdrop would look nice, and it's Friday, April 7th. Beautiful day, t-shirt weather. And I thought I'd talk a little bit this afternoon about uh, Mitch Waite some more, because I, the, I did a video about him a couple days ago, and it seemed to be pretty popular, and some of you are obviously pretty interested in Mitch, so... I thought I'd shoot another one and and uh, tell a few more Mitch Waite stories. So if you saw the other video, you know that Mitch was a longtime squatcher in Arizona, and his spot, uh, which he called the hot zone, was uh, was actually over where we call Crazy Town. And the reason why we call it Crazy Town is quite simply because so many crazy things have happened over there. But um, anyway, Mitch worked that uh, that spot for eight summers. And he would spend several days at a time up there, multiple times over the course of the summer. Oftentimes, he was totally by himself. But uh, when I was over there, I met with him on October of uh, 2012, and that would have been his fifth summer. So he was there three more summers uh, after I met him. And I ran into him a couple other times after that. But just to say hi, I never really got a chance to spend any time with him. So, but anyway, there's some other Mitch Waite stories that I think you might find interesting. And I guess one of his first summers up there, he was out going for a walk. And, and you can tell by the pictures, Mitch was, uh, he was a rather heavy guy. He was a, a bit overweight, probably 50, 60 pounds overweight. and wasn't in real good shape. But he tried to get out and he'd go hiking a little bit. Well, he was out hiking one afternoon and he found where a tree had blown over. And something had built a big uh, a nest of some kind or shelter of some kind under the root ball. So being curious, he decided he's going to crawl in there and see what it was, see what was in there. So he did, which I'm sure was no small feat for Mitch. But anyway, he got in there and this was one of the first summers he was there. Maybe the first summer, maybe the second one. I don't recall exactly. But anyway, he got in there. And what did he find? Oh, my golly. He found an infant Sasquatch in there. And immediately he knew that mama was around there somewhere and that he was afraid that uh, mama caught him in there messing with the baby. It'd be curtains for him. He'd heard all the stories. So he decided he was good. He better get out of there. So he did. And uh, I'm sure that uh, I can, it scared him pretty bad. Mitch was always afraid of the forest people. And I'll tell you in a little while why that was so. But anyway, Mitch crawled back out of there and he was real big in ca on cameras and stuff. And so he set up a game camera on a tree watching this watching this shelter, and he just knew that whatever's going to come back, he was going to catch him on camera. Well, he came back to check the camera a couple days later, and he found out that the camera had been pulled all the way around the tree, so it was facing the opposite direction. Well, Mitch had a big thing about game cameras, and he hung them all over the place, and there's quite a few of them came up missing, and he was telling me about that when I visited with him, and he thought people were finding them and stealing them, and and he was quite upset about that. He tried locking them with chains and everything else, and and uh, and he lost a few cameras. So he tried a trick, and he thought sure that was going to be the that was going to work. And he when his uh, when his son was up there with him, they picked a big old dead pine tree, and they uh, where the bark had all fallen off of them. You've all seen those big bare gray gray colored pine trees sticking up, and so they ended up with a cordless drill and a bunch of screw in steps. And they drilled holes and they screwed steps into this pine tree up to about uh, the 10, 12 foot level. And they hung a game camera up there. And then as they came back down, they unscrewed the steps and took them with them. Well, they figured nobody's going to steal this camera because they can't get up there unless they have steps with them. And nobody's going to be carrying steps with them. So he thought he was going to be do good with that. Well, a few days later, he went back to get his camera. And he found that it had been busted all to pieces. So they screwed the steps in the tree, went back up there, retrieved the camera, and they found it was broken, and it was broken open and destroyed, and it was full of liquid. And, uh, well, it hadn't rained. So when they came back down, they dumped the liquid out of it, and they found out it smelled like urine. And then they looked around, here's a rock laying by the bottom of the tree with evidence that been used to smash on the camera with. So what had happened is, is the forest people, they were trying to show Mitch that they were in charge and that they weren't going to be tricked by his trickery on cameras. 
And they somehow, who knows how they did it, but they went up there and they broke his camera all to pieces with a rock. And then apparently one of them peed in it. And that was their that was their present to Mitch about that. Well, Mitch tried all kinds of camera stuff. I told you a little bit about it in the last video, but one of the other things he did is he he had an easy up that he used for a kitchen for a kitchen tent, and he hid an, he hid one a, a motion actuated camera up in the corner of that where you wouldn't see it until you walked underneath it. And he figured sure he was going to catch one of them. I told you on the last thing that he, about it. He did ice chest traps where if you open the lid on the ice chest, it would take your picture. And he thought, sure, he was going to get them because, you know, he was still looking for some kind of clever ape. And he thought he was way smarter than they are, which, um, you know, we found out they're smarter than us. And they know what we're going to do before we do it. But anyway, uh, all he ever caught on his uh, on his camera in the, his cooking tent is he caught raccoons and he caught skunks. And one time he caught a house cat. I had no idea where the house cat ever came from. Maybe somebody dumped it up there. We'd never know. But I, I saw the video and it just, sure enough, it was a house cat walking around on his picnic table that triggered his motion sensitive camera. But Mitch tried all kinds of stuff. And and uh, as I said, he was afraid of them. Uh, now, he slept in a homemade wooden trailer and it's painted white with a bunch of footprints on the side. Uh, you can see it on the thumbnails, both on this on this video and on the previous video. And that was pretty well known around and, you know, it's pretty hard to hide something like that. So, you know, when he came to town, everybody knew he was in town and he, uh, but he slept in there. Well, the forest people, they took great, I think the young ones uh, took great pleasure in coming up and slapping the side of it at night. And, uh, they, you know, they'd keep him awake and, and Mitch was scared to death of him. And he'd, he'd be hiding in the back of that trailer, expecting they're going to rip it open any minute. He'd be hiding back there with a gun, and they'd keep him awake all night, and I'm sure they were, had great fun doing that. And, uh, but he never, you know, he never really got that far because I think in his mind he never could get beyond the fact that he was still looking for some kind of clever undiscovered ape. He, he didn't realize that what he actually was looking for. As I said in the other video, we've gone way beyond that. And uh, another thing that Mitch used to do is that Mitch... Uh, here again, he he believed that they that they were uh, they would feel more comfortable with routine. So, Mitch would always park in the same spot. Uh, he'd always wear a red shirt. If you ever watch any of his videos, uh, which is with his YouTube channel still up there, it's Bigfoot Research in all caps. So if you type in Bigfoot Research all caps and the name is Mitch Waite, uh, W A I T E. Uh, you can still watch his videos, and you'll see in most of them he's wearing a red T-shirt. Well, that was his thing. Uh, he also got into this thing about uh, that uh, they were natural creatures, and they didn't like chemical smells and all that kind of stuff. And so uh, he would, uh, when he came up here, he wouldn't bathe. And even the time I visited him, he was definitely needed a shower. Fortunately, I sat upwind of him. But that was just his what he thought was helping. And for a long time, we subscribed to some of that. In fact, uh, my partner Kevin and I, for a while, we wore red shirts during the day to be like Mitch. But, you know, we found out that doesn't make any difference. Uh, it, you know, once they know who you are, they know who you are, and they're smarter than we are. And, uh, you know, got to give them credit for that. And uh, so even this uh, here a while back uh, when we were just deciding whether we were, when we were going to be able to get to go up there, uh, Kevin and I took a day trip, and we went up there to check and see whether the snow was all gone or not. And I did a video on that uh, when we were driving back down off the mountain. And it's, I called it something like pine trees to desert or something like that. And uh, even on that day, when we came in, uh, we were driving Kevin's uh, truck that he's got now, and, he, and it's a different truck. And as we were coming into Crazy Town, I actually got a question at that... Uh, that the you know the truck was different and so i explained to him that yeah kevin has a different truck now and and uh, we because before he drove a gray tundra lifted toyota tundra and now he drives a, a ford big white ford super duty diesel and uh but they actually they actually asked about it and i explained to him that kevin had a different truck now and that's the one he'd be driving from now on and they were okay with that now, Mitch had a little different take on it. For a long time, Mitch had a uh, little red Toyota pickup that he pulled his little box trailer with. 
And uh, he'd always, like I said, he'd always park at the same spot because he thought that that, that would that would make him accept him, make him that they would recognize it was him if he always did everything the same. And uh, well, make a long story short, he was over going to his son's place over near Sholo and he hit an elk with it and totaled it. So he ended up buying a a Ford Ranger, which you can see in the background on the thumbnail. And uh, and he said that it took him a long time for him to 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 get used to that truck because they were so used to the other one. Well. That was what he thought, you know, now, knowing we know now, we know that wasn't true. But one last little tidbit about Mid Mitch Wade, I've let this go for quite a while now, is that one night, a couple summers ago, we were over there, and we were talking about Mitch, and when the forest people were there with us, and they were talking to us a little bit, and I asked him if they remembered Mitch, and I got the funniest answer, and it sounded like a young one, and the answer we got was, he was funny. So you know right well that they had a great time messing around with poor old Mitch while he was there because he was afraid of them and he never quite got beyond all that. Uh, if they start trying to mess with us now, you know, we treat them like teenagers. We say, well, you guys knock that off. And sure enough, they do. Because you're not dealing with monkeys. You're dealing with people that are smarter than we are. And they do like to mess with you sometimes. So I think with that, I don't know how long this has gone, but it's probably enough for right now. Some more stories about Mitch Waite. So as I always tell you, take care of each other, love each other. Uh, beautiful day, and we'll see you on the next one real soon. I'm looking forward to going over Monday. And I don't know if I'll get anything more shot between now and then, but I either will or I won't. And so we'll talk to you again on the next one. So peace out.